life got hard like that. I didn't sleep for five days, pacing in my house. Just pacing, 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 panic attack after panic attack. I ate lunch by myself. You know, I'd walk through the halls by myself, but I always had martial arts. That was my safe place. So my childhood isolation became the reason of why I became a UFC fighter. My dad's African-American, and then my mom is the child of Holocaust survivors. And to say that you were not safe would be an understatement. Like every time I left the house or anything, go to school, my dad would always be like, Elliot, watch your back, be careful. When we moved, I was eight years old. My house was spray painted with swastikas. Uh, Niger's go home, they spelled the word wrong. So I go to school, I was talking about this jiu-jitsu stuff, ah, the gray seeds, the UFC, and it was all very young. And the, a couple of the wrestlers were like, yeah, we will smash you. And I was like, all right, let's see. And they didn't smash me. I, I choked them out. And these guys were like state champs. So, you know, a couple people heard of it. And then I got some friends. It was like, oh, yo, if you can fight like this, then you'll have friends. You'll be accepted, you'll be loved, you'll be safe. And if I fight in the UFC and I become the world champion, everyone will love me, right? Everyone will love me, how will they not? Elliot, you're not a UFC champion. I'm not. My greatness, my, my ability couldn't come through. And it was all because I was so scared that if I lost, I'd have no friends. It would be high school all over again. I'd be by myself, my wife would leave me, all, everything, everything. I'd be ostracized, I'd be, I'd be gone. It's a lot of pressure, right? More, pre fighting is enough pressure. You get money to show up to the fight and you get money to win the fight, it's double. So like when I was fighting, I, my first contract with the UFC was 8,000 and 8,000. 8,000 if I show up, 8,000 more if I win. That's 16 grand. Most people fight three to four times a year. So that's $64,000 you made. But four times a year is 15 minutes each one, an hour. What if you have a bad hour? Your whole year, right? You, you, you made nothing. So that's enough pressure alone. So I retire in 2011, that's my last fight. Life's great. Couldn't be better, I got two, I have two great kids now at this point in my life. I live in a nice house. You know, my life is, my life is golden, or so I think. But I've never dealt with this demon that's inside of me, this fear, this anxiety. Life got soft and life got hard like that. I didn't sleep for five days, pacing in my house. Just pacing, 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 panic attack after panic attack. I, I was broke, I was broke. I did wake up one morning and I, the first thought when my eyes opened was what if I killed myself? And then it was, oh my God, Elliot, how, how could you think that? Like, how could you think that? You have two boys, right? Like, like how could I take their dad, how could I take their dad away? That was the worst day. That was one of the worst days of my life. That was one of the worst days. That chatter that goes on in your head every day. How do you deal with this chatter? For me, journaling. Journaling is one of the things that got me out of the intenseness. Writing it out on a piece of paper, got it out of my head. It took some power away from it. Mental health for me is therapy, journaling, meditation, teaching, and I like to exercise really, really intensely. I go to therapy once every two weeks. I get to say whatever I want to her, and there's no judgment. She just tries to help me be more skillful. And I went to my therapist in crisis. That's when I found her. And right now I'm not in crisis, but I still go. I meditate every morning. I have gratitude every morning. I go through what I call the four agreements, which are be impeccable with my word. Take nothing personally, make no assumptions, and I always look for the most skillful action. And then I recite my I am's. Like this question of who is Elliot? It's not positive, it's not negative. 
it's always true. I am a father, I am a teacher, I am a student, I am a fighter, I am a survivor. And all of these things together make me enough. You can't love anybody else if you don't love yourself. It's not possible. I am enough with my flaws, with my imperfections. I don't think it's realizing that you're not perfect that is the problem. I think the problem becomes that we think perfect exists. We probably deal with at least one suicide a year in our community. For some reason, this martial arts thing and, and, and mental health, they, they kind of tie. So my students, no one can tell them that they're not enough. They are never alone. We, this, we got you. Walk in the door and we got you. None of us can save everyone, but if you build a community big enough and strong enough so that everyone's included and everyone's accepted, then there's always gonna be somebody for somebody. Touch a life, show someone their power, show someone the, how they can be amazing in the world. And once you find your power, you'll have a purpose. And once you have your purpose, you just go out there and you give it away. Just give it away to everyone. Watch what happens. Your life will be so filled, you won't have enough time in the day. My name is Elliot Marshall, and I'm a UFC fighter and a martial arts teacher.